Rich, Mr. Gordon, uh, back at you with another week of pre-algebra on BCPS TV. These lessons are for the week of May 25th, and we'll start with lesson one, translations. Our lesson one objective is that students will describe the properties of translations and the effects on a geometric figure in the coordinate plane. All right, some key vocabulary here using our hashtag math literacy. Uh, first key vocabulary word is a transformation. A transformation is a change in position or orientation of a figure. So I'm thinking about change in position, meaning that the shape has to move. And then there's this word orientation, which we'll talk about in a couple of seconds. All right, so we're just gonna specifically look at how something moves through a translation. So that is a movement, which is a slide of a figure along a straight line. All right, our pre-image. Our pre-image is the original figure in the transformation. It's often sometimes referred to as our input. So our original kind of means our first. So it's our first figure before we perform a change to it. All right, an image. An image is a figure that's resulting from the transformation. This is sometimes referred to as our output. We have the coordinate plane. A coordinate plane is formed by the intersection of the X and Y axis. Hopefully you remember the coordinate plane from graphing uh, earlier in the year. And then orientation. So this came up in our first definition. Orientation is the arrangement of the points after a transformation. So kind of think it's, it's the order that the points kind of move around um, after we perform a transformation. Okay, let's start trying to connect and applying some of this vocabulary. So you see two shapes here on the coordinate graph. I'm going to give you about 20 seconds. And in your mind, I just want you to, to notice um, different things about these shapes. Okay, so here's some things you may have noticed. All right, first of all, both figures are rectangles and they have the same width and the same length. Because they have the same width and the same length, they're gonna have the same area. So both of these actually have the same area of six because they're six square units because they're two by three rectangles. Uh, you may have noticed that both rectangles have the same orientation, um, which is a word you probably wouldn't know, but uh, it means that the arrangement of the letters have not changed. So if I go clockwise, both rectangles go A, B, C, D. All right. Uh, you may have noticed they're both in different locations on the graph or different positions. And you may have noticed here that the red graph has apostrophes. Um, this is called prime notation. So this is A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime. Uh, connecting back to some vocabulary that we just looked at, this here would be called our pre-image because it was the, our first graph. Our prime notation indicates that this is our image because it happened after we moved the first shape. All right, so let's take a closer look at these two shapes uh, on this graph. So as we noted, the shapes are exactly the same size, and one shape has been moved um, across the graph. So if we take a look at this, this is our first example of what we call a translation. So we would say that this shape has been translated on this coordinate plane. The way we translate is we move each point along the same length line in the same direction. So if you look here at this blue line, point D has been slid along this blue line on the graph. If you look at point B and you draw a line connecting the two point Bs, you can see that these points have been moved 
along the same exact length line in the same exact direction. We can describe this change by its vertical and horizontal change. So if we take a look at this, if we think about point D, we would say its vertical change is one, two, three, four, five. So we could say this change is five units down. All right, and then if we wanna look at our horizontal change, we would count one, two, three, four, five, six, and we would say it was moved six units to the right. And this holds true for every point on this graph. All right, so very important. The first image, this blue image, is referred to as our pre-image. So rectangle A, B, C, D is our pre-image. Our second image, the red image, is read A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime. All right, so let's see if you can uh, show what you know here. So again, we have two shapes, two triangles. Up here in the left-hand corner in our blue triangle, we have what we call our pre-image, and then we've translated it to create our image down here in red. I know the red one is my image because it has the prime notation, A prime, B prime, and C prime, meaning it's been changed. Okay, so we're gonna fill in the blanks to describe the translation. So the image A prime, B prime, C prime has been translated blank unit right and blank units blank. Okay, so it's your job. I'll give you about 20 seconds to see if you can fill in the blanks. Okay, let's see how we did. So I'm gonna take any of these points. So I'll t start with point C. And I'm gonna look at its right movement. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have that as nine units right. And now I'm gonna count its movements down one two three four five six seven so i now have seven units and because i went right i now had to go down all right here's another one i give you about uh 15 seconds try to tell me which one is not the translation Okay, so hopefully you chose B is not the translation. Um, each point was not moved along the same line. Um, so B was not your translation. All right, so let's take a look at uh, translation specifically on the coordinate plane. Uh, so here we have what we call a four quadrant graph. And we have two shapes. Our blue shape, again, would be our pre-image. And our green shape would be our image. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the vertices of this triangle as ordered pairs. So if we take a look, point A is at negative 2, 2, left 2, up 2. Point B is at 3, 4. 
and point C is at 4, 1. As we look at our image, A prime is at negative 4, negative 3, B prime is at 1, negative 1, and C prime is at 2, negative 4. So what we want to do is we want to notice that each image has been translated two units left, one, two, and five units down, one, two, three, four, five. Now, I want you to take a look at your points between A and A prime, and between B and B prime, and C and C prime. And see if you notice a connection. So I'll highlight here for you. So when you look at your x coordinates, negative 2 and negative 4, 3 and 1, 4 and 2, do we see any connection between those numbers? And likewise, let me look at my y coordinates 2 and negative 3, 4 and negative 1, 1 and negative 4. I'll give you about 20 seconds to kind of think through and see if you see any connection uh, between our highlighted numbers. Okay, hopefully what you were able to notice is each shape was translated two units left. If I add negative 2, because left on the coordinate plane is negative, to each x value, I end up getting my new coordinate points. So a was negative 2 for my x coordinate. If I add negative 2 to that, I now get negative 4, which is the a prime x coordinate. If I add negative 2 to 3, I end up with 1. If I add negative 2 to 4, I end up with 2. And likewise, I can add a number to all my y values. So since my shape is translating down 5 units, again, that's a negative number. Since I'm translating down 5 units, I can add a negative 5 to each y value. So again, if my pre-image had a y value of negative 3 and I add, excuse me, had a y value of 2 and I add negative 5, I now am at negative 3. So notice all these coordinate, coordinates that I'm writing match my uh, coordinates up top. 4 plus negative 5 is negative 1. And two, or 1 plus negative 5 is negative 4. So I can take my pre-image and I can add my units that I'm moving to each X and Y value and get the coordinates for my image. All right, so let's take a look and see if you can show what you know. So I'll set you up on the problem and give you some time to work. So trapezoid D, E, F, G has vertices at the following points. So if you notice, there are four different vertices because a trapezoid is a four-sided figure. The trapezoid was translated five units left and up four units. So I need to go back and interpret what that means. So left is an X value because left and right is X and left is also negative. Up four units. Up and down is a Y value, and up is my positive move. So to think about what I need to do here, I'm gonna take each X value, and I'm gonna add negative five. And then I'm gonna take each Y value, and I'm going to add four. So I am going to give you about 30 seconds and see if you can figure out what the coordinates of our image would be.
Okay, so D prime would be negative four, seven. E prime would be zero, seven. F prime would be two, three. And G prime would be negative four, three. All right, for the week of May 25, our second lesson is on reflections. So for reflection, students will describe the properties of reflections and the effects of geometric figure in the coordinate plane. Okay, so two key vocabulary words here. A reflection is a transformation. So it's another way to move a shape of a figure that flips the figure across a line. That line is called the line of reflection. And the line of reflection is a line that a figure is flipped across to create a mirror image of the original figure. All right, so the key to reflection is each vertex and its image are the same distance from the line. So this is referred to as the line of reflection, this line here in the middle of the two shapes. If you notice, S and S prime are both two units from the line of reflection. That's going to hold true for every vertex. So if you look at T and T prime, they're both one unit from the line of reflection. If you look at R and R prime, they're both four units from the line of reflection. Now, what's interesting about a reflection is this idea that the orientation has now changed. So if I start at the top of my triangle and I move clockwise, I go to S to R prime. But when I'm at the top of my triangle here and I go clockwise, I go from S to T. Therefore, I've actually changed the orientation of the numbers, or excuse me, of the letters. That's a, an easy way to figure out if something is actually a reflection. Okay, so let's see if you can do it. Uh, which one of these is not the reflection? Okay, the one that's not the reflection is B. All right, a real easy way to tell. I'll start at the top of my triangle. As I go clockwise, I go from B to A. And as I go clockwise, I go B to A prime. Therefore, I have not changed my orientation. In fact, B to review from lesson one is a translation, not a reflection. A and C represent reflections. All right, much like we did with translations on the coordinate plane, let's look at reflections. So what we're gonna do for this is we're gonna reflect over the X axis, so this line here in red. Remember, every corresponding vertice is gonna be the same distance from this line of reflection. So let's examine the points. So these are the points for the triangle in blue. These are my points for the triangle in red or in green, excuse me. And I want you to pay special attention. Remember, we're reflecting over the x axis. So I want you to pay attention to the y values. And I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. And I want you to see if you can complete this sentence. So take a look at those y coordinates and try and complete this sentence. When reflected over the x axis, the y values become there. Give you about 15 seconds. All right, so when we reflect over the x-axis, hope you knows, notice the y values become their opposites. So negative 3 goes to 3, negative 1 to 1, negative 5 to 5. Notice the x values did not change. And what's kind of cool here to note is the opposite of that is true for the y-axis. So when we reflect over the y-axis, the x values become 
their opposites. All right, let's see if you can show what you know. So the trapezoid trap has the following vertices. It's reflected over the y-axis. So think for a minute, if I'm reflecting over the y-axis, which coordinate becomes its opposite? I'll give you about 30 seconds to see if you can come up with the new coordinates for T prime, R prime, A prime, and P prime. Okay, hopefully remembered when you're going over the y-axis, x becomes its opposite. So it's going to become 4, 6. R prime is going to be 2, 5. A prime is going to become 2, 3. And P prime is going to become 4, 1. Notice I did not change any of my y values, only made x my opposite from reflecting over the y-axis. All right, that's all for today. Uh, until next time, remember, when we're dealing with a translations, we move points the same distance in the same direction. They keep their orientation. When we're reflecting, we move all points equal distance from the line of reflection, but they do not keep their orientation. So if I start at the top with A prime and work clockwise, I go A prime to B prime. But here, if I start at A and go clockwise, I go from A to C. Uh, Till next time, uh, be good and stay safe.